welcome back to my youtube channel this is nothing with annie i think about nothing health lifestyle and faith welcome back to my channel if you're new to this channel like i said i am anita nothing with annie i think about nothing health lifestyle you're welcome to this channel everything nothing health lifestyle faith you'll get it on this channel so do well to subscribe like share this video if you watch at the end and you like it or you find it interesting if you're not subscribed Turn on your notification bell, turn on the subscribe button, it's down on your screen and let's get right into this video. So on today's video, I will be talking about how to do proper handover and takeover in a hospital setting and our, the template I'll be using is how we do it in my facility. It might be different from other places but I think I will do it in my facility is kind of a proper way so if you are interested in this video do well sit back and enjoy welcome back so first of all you will need to know what a handover and takeover means you have to know what it means before you even know how to do a handover or takeover so in plain English and a handover is when an individual you know who has been delegated some duties and responsibilities transfer those duties to the next nurse who is supposed to take over from where that particular nurse went. So this is what a handover and takeover means. When it comes to handover and takeover, it has to be proper and detailed. It has to be very, very detailed. You have to hand over details to the next nurse. And there are certain components that make up these details you have to hand over. First of all, you have to hand over this patient's name. You have to hand over the patient's sex. You have to hand over the patient diagnosis. You have to hand over the patient the day of admission, either first day of admission, second day of admission, the number of days this patient has stayed in the hospital or in the ward or wherever you are working. So the date of admission should be handed over to the patient. And then the diagnosis of the patient, the disease or the diagnosis this patient is being managed for should be properly handed over. And also history of this patient. When I say history, I mean is this patient a diabetic patient? Is, it a, is this patient a known diabetic patient? Is this patient a known hypertensive patient? Is this patient a known peptic ulcer disease patient? Has this patient suffered from any disease in the previous previously, you know? Is this patient allergic to anything? It has to be handed over. It is very, very important for the safety of the nurse. For the safety of the patient. Is this patient an RBD patient? Is this patient an HIV patient? Is this patient a COVID patient? You know, all these histories should be handed over to the nurse. Now, after all these are done, the next thing you should do is going system by system. When I mean system by system, you know the systems in the body, you know we have about nine systems in the body. So it is it's, it's going to be very easy. And it's going to be very detailed when you hand over your patient system by system. First of all, the first system you will hand over is the neurological system, the CNS. So when it comes to uh, the neurological system, what and what do you hand over? First of all, you hand over this patient as being awake or asleep or conscious. Is this patient awake? Is this patient asleep? Is this patient alert? Is this patient unconscious? That's why you should hand over. Another thing is, is this patient a rented? Going back now, so when it comes to neuro, when it comes to CNS, you, you hand over this patient CNS files using the glasgocoma skill, where you have the high opening, the local, and the oral response. So you use this to you know, hand over the patient. For example, you are handing over Mr. A to the next nurse and when it comes to CNS you are like okay patient is awake patient is alert patient is verbally responsive if the patient is asleep currently as you are doing the handover you say patient is asleep but arousable to call patient is you know unconscious the patient is unconscious the patient is currently unconscious so you use the glatocoma skill so that you will be in the right order so you patient is awake alert responsive Verbally responsive. If patient is asleep, like I said, you can say patient is asleep, but but arousable to call. You know, so something like that. Then, if the patient is oriented, you say patient is oriented, and there are three times of orientation. You have to test him to place and to time. If the patient can answer his or her name or can say his or her name, if the patient knows what time it is at the moment, if the patient knows where he or she, that is 
um, oriented to place if the patient can respond to his or her name oriented to person the patient know what time of the day it is if it's morning night or evening patient is oriented to time so if the patient is oriented to all of these you say patient is oriented times three the patient is only oriented to one of these patient is oriented times one the patient is oriented to two of you know, the components you say patient is oriented times two so that is how it is being done then you go to the pupils you said you examine the pupils and you you know you say what the pupils are pupils are three mm by that time reactive to light it is basically reactive you also hand it over depending on your examinations and what you get you hand it over to the nurse even though the nurse is going to do our own examination then in cns we also talk about corneal and gag reflex we talk about those two and then we also talk about power we talk about power power is graded into five you have zero one two two three to five you can just go and browse a little bit about it you hand over the power for the right upper limbs what is the power you hand it over for the left lower limbs for the <coughs> um for the right upper limbs and the left upper limbs for the right lower limbs and the right right left lower limbs so yeah you grade the power and you hand it over to the left in your shift you will have done that already so this is what you should hand over to the nurse now we move to the cardiovascular system you know i said we are taking it system by system from head to toe neuro has to do with the head the brain now we are going to the cbs cbs has to do with the systolic blood pressure the diastolic blood pressure the pulse rate if this patient has a pacemaker you make sure that the, the nurse you are handing over to the nurse if there is anything about the cvs at all this, this this patient has you have to let the next nurse know the next nurse know <laughs> so like i said cvs has to do with the blood pressure the pulse rate yes you hand it over also then we also have the respiratory system respiratory system has to do, the, do with the respiratory rate the spo2 so when it comes to respiratory rates, you know, you you make sure the nurse the nurse you're handing over to know, has an idea of what the respiratory rate is, what the SpO2 is like. Is this patient saturating well with room air or with oxygen? You have to let the nurse, the next nurse know. Then we go to the gastrointestinal system. This has to do with the food the patient takes in. Is this patient on NG tubing? Is, it, is this patient on PEG tubing? Is this patient, you know, does this patient feed orally? How many percent of the breakfast, lunch, dinner, whatever did the patient take? When last did this patient open go well? When last did this patient not um, go to the toilet and all of that? This is what you should hand over to the nurse. What kind of diet is this patient on? What kind of food do this patient eat? What kind of food do this, is this patient supposed to be eating? This is what you should hand over to the next nurse. Then we also have the urinary system. This has to do with, you know, the way the, the patient urinates. Is this patient on catheter? If this patient is on catheter, how many days in situ, you know, um, total intake and input if the patient is on catheter, um, if the patient is on adult diaper, is the diaper well soaked, mildly soaked or moderately soaked? If the patient voids the urinal, you indicate if the patient can go to the toilet by his or his or his or herself, you also indicate that. Then we also have for the intergometry system, MSS, is there any ulcer? Is the skin intact? If there's any ulcer, you let the next nurse know. If the skin is intact, you also let the next, the next nurse know. Is there any blister on the skin? Is there any pruritus? Is there any discoloration? Any abnormality on the skin? Everything that has to do with the skin, this is under the intervention system. You hand it over to the next nurse. If there is an ulcer, you also tell the nurse the kind of grade. You grade the ulcer already and then tell the nurse, oh, this is the one ulcer, she has the two ulcer, she has the three ulcer, she has the four ulcer. All this should be handed over to the next nurse. Then, then another system is, this is not a system per se, but you have to do the IV fluid line. The patient is on any IV fluid, the patient has any 
Canada Institute, any like Institute, you also have Dover, you know, mention the name of the student this patient is born, the line the patient is born, how many days is the Canada Institute, depending on your hospital policy and protocols, you can have a number of days for line to the Institute, also for catheter, also for the set, depending on your hospital policy and protocols. You hand it over to the next one too. Then the next one is pain score. If this patient has pain, you grade the pain, you score the pain, and you hand it over to the next one. Another thing is uh, medication. This is very, very important. You have to hand over the medications properly. If there is any medication you were supposed to give in your shift, you did not give in your shift. Now the next one too is taking over. That you know, explain to her why and the reason why you give with the drugs. Make sure she goes through the drug charts for the medications you know she has to give. If there's anyone on hold, you have to let him or her know. If there's any medication she going to give in her shift, you know, those kind of things you have to make the next person know. Then for the endocrine, okay, I forgot to mention endocrine system. You have to also talk about the endocrine system. This patient fasting blood sugar, random blood sugar, very, very important to be on a safe side. Then going back to the medications, like I said, you have to let the next nurse know the kind of medication this patient is on. Is there anyone that has been reviewed? Is there anyone that was withheld in your shift? You have to let the next nurse know. Yeah, so then lastly, you have to hand over the properties of this patient. When I say properties, is there anything this patient came to the hospital with? That the nurse is supposed to know when it comes to properties it could be money it could be jewelry it could be clothing it could be the disposables tissue gloves you know um water everything that has to do with the belongings of this patient should be handed over to the next nurse so that he or she that is taking over from you will not be confused when the need arises for clarity sake so yeah this is basically how to hand over properly and you know detailed handover to the so whoever you're handing over to whoever is taking over from you this is how it should be done depending on facilities like i said but this is like a basic guideline for how to do a proper handover hope this video was helpful if you have any question drop it in the comment section is there anything i missed out that you feel should be also handed over please drop it in the comment section i would like to see it do not forget to subscribe like this video share this video if you enjoyed watching to the end share this video drop your comment i would love to see it come on post notification bell to know when i post a new video and i'll see you in my next video until then bye